the origin and founding of the European Society for Pediatric Nephrology. And I am Professor Gavin Arneo. On behalf of myself, my wife June, who was hostess at the 67 Foundation meeting, and Miss Lily Plank, who did all the secretarial ESPN secretarial work here for eight years for us, including the Foundation meeting. Welcome back to Glasgow after 50 years. I am now 94 and apologise for my voice faltering. My grandson, Lewis Robinson, who is just embarking on his own career in medicine, will now read on for me. Thank you, Lewis. The question is often asked, why was the meeting in Glasgow? And the only way to answer this is to explain my career and, uh, and role as founder of the European Society for Pediatric Nephrology. In 1951, I first took up pediatric nephrology in the Royal Hospital for Sick Children, Glasgow. This included work on hemolytic uremic syndrome, renal hypertension, glomerulonephritis and developmental anomalies between 1951 and 1956. My unique research on cortisone and later prednisolone for nephrosis yielded much better results that reported from America and I went on to discover the Arneo Dukansky factor, a presser agent in plasma. I was called in by the International Pediatric Association, IPA, to speak at the 1956 Congress in Copenhagen and became widely known receiving three research prizes. The WHO Prize was a travelling scholarship which took me to Sweden, Italy and the USA. There, Henry Barnett invited me to attend the Nephrosis Foundation meeting in New York, where I first realised the USA had got organised, met annually and each year had contact with a number of paediatricians from East and West Europe. I went to several such meetings in the next 10 years and realised that USA paediatric nephrology was progressing progressively, taking over worldwide, with more influence in Europe than any other society. In Europe, the multiple language complications maintained this problem for 11 years. Professor Pierre Royer in Paris set up French cooperation in countries where French is used and held teaching courses in Paris. Scandinavian and Anglo-Saxon speakers spoke English and little French. By 1966, I realised that if a good European cooperative paediatric nephrology setup was to be achieved, we needed one, a common language, and English seemed to be the worldwide language of the future. Two, meetings should be held annually in different countries with a local president. Three, an elected council, changing annually. Nobody was doing anything significant, which is why Europe lagged behind. I said so to a visiting Dutch paediatrician, Harman Tiddens, who urged me to go into action. He was essential as a linguist, and without his support, I would not have dared to go ahead. I only spoke English and a little school French. He and I drew up the proposition, the proposed constitution, in the back seat of my car on a sightseeing road trip, with June driving the route for our visitor's rest day. In 1967, Glasgow, being the first British paediatric nephrology unit, had already a record since 1917, from when the world's first renal biopsy on either adult or children was reported from the Royal Hospital for Sick Children. Yes, this is the centenary year, an extra cause to celebrate. We produced many international publications, the IPA meeting in Copenhagen led to a succession of paediatricians from the world visiting us in Glasgow. The most important may have been Turkey's Isan Doromaci. I gained favour in Eastern Europe and the British Council sent me to tour countries such as Russia, East Germany and Czechoslovakia, who did not encourage visitation westward. More importantly, it encouraged the region to allow paediatric nephrologists to go to this meeting in Glasgow. I wrote to some of Europe's top paediatric nephrologists 
and asked if they would accept the proposed constitution of ESPN and come to a meeting in September 1967 to found ESPN with me as a president for a year and them as founding councillors. Most European countries with paediatric nephrologists were contacted and they all agreed to come. The founding councillors were Nilo Halman, Jan Winberg, Emil Gautier and Hans Bickel. The University of Glasgow helped me as much as possible, giving us the use of the Hall of Residence, the lecture theatre of the Department of Child Health and the part-time use of my secretary. Without this help, ESPN would not have been possible to found in Glasgow. Commercial firms such as e Eames, Beecham, Glaxo, Hoist, ICA, ICI, Pitzer, Fitzer, sorry, and Warner were amazingly generous in support. And here is the original constitution and conference programme. All went well except that René Habib and René Coutin were initially given a twin room by a non-French speaking secretary. The meeting lasted over four nights and three days. The number of countries attending came as a shock in 1966 with only my secretary to help in Glasgow. But by 1967, the ESPN meeting had almost 17 European countries, plus guests such as Speaker Henry Barnett of the USA. There was almost 50 countries in total attending the three-day meeting, which included scientific sessions, social meetings in the evenings, and a farewell banquet after a bus tour of central Scotland to Edinburgh, the Fourth Bridge, the Trossachs, Stirling, and Loch Lomond. The foundation meeting ran smoothly. We had been worried that the French group with Pierre Royer as the star would prove resentful, but in his absence, he sent three French paediatric nephrologists to give papers in English. After one paper, a question was asked, and we discovered that he did not understand English, but in fact had memorized the paper to read it. By the time of ESPN's next meeting, he had learned English. It was agreed we should meet yearly, in different countries with a local president, and in 1971 meeting in Paris, we had an international meeting associated with us. The general feeling was that things had gone well. The meeting in Paris put pressure on me to act as a secretary general and set up a worldwide organization similar to ESPN. Many countries pressed for this, such as Japan, India, Australia, the USA, and many parts of Europe. At first I refused, fearing being secretary of the ESPN and involvement in world affairs, but by 1974 the organisation was in place and I called it the International Paediatric Nephrology Association, or IPNA for short. This was essentially a copy of ESPN that was completely separate. Both organisations then met jointly every three years. I wrote out a provisional constitution that was written in the English language, this went to senior paediatric nephrologists worldwide, whom all agreed to join. IPNA was finally set up at the meeting in the USA in 1974, where I was appointed Secretary General. You are very astute people, attending two anniversaries. A hundred years ago, the first renal biopsies in either adults or children were performed here in Glasgow, at the Royal Hospital for Sick Children. And 50 years ago, in 1967 with Harmon Tiddens, when ESPN was pioneered, I never imagined that it's what a success it would be. I would just like to say to all of you, on behalf of the children of Europe, whom you have benefited, and who have benefited through ESPN, thank you for making my dream a reality and serving so many young people.